One of the most common questions I have to answer as they have an opportunity to talk and teach about the King James Bible is, wasn't King James a homosexual? And that question always seems to come from people who think that discredits the King James Bible. In my early years dealing with this, I would just say God can use whoever he chooses, regardless of whether they're a godly person or not. But someone contacted me and said, you really need to study King James. So I did. I devoted a couple of weeks just to that. I got a hold of everything I could find on King James. Again and again, you'd see the statement. People say, well, King James is homosexual. But the amazing thing was, in not one of those publications was the slightest bit of proof offered. The famous Moody Monthly magazine that stirred so many people to believe this. I got a hold of a copy of it. And while they just asserted and asserted and asserted, they offered absolutely no proof. And it was an amazing thing to me. I could find no one who could give me a reason to believe that, just that we all know it. Truth was, best I could find, 25 years after King James' death, a year after his son's death, there was no monarchy in place at the moment. Uh, one man that he had fired from a high-ranking government position asserted that he was a homosexual. At the time, many people refuted the idea as absolute nonsense. He had written in Basilicon Doron, a book he wrote on how to be a king, how terrible homosexuality was. It was an unnatural vice. It was one crime the king should never pardon. And uh, repeatedly throughout his administration as king, spoke against homosexuality. And some folks will say homosexuals are often hypocritical about that, especially people in high places. So it goes back, why do you believe that? What's the evidence for it? Whoever saw him commit a homosexual act, he certainly never said a word in favor of homosexuality. And, and usually folks run to some English customs. Kissing men on the cheek, King James did that a lot. But so did everybody in England. Some cultures adopt that as a form of greeting. I've personally preached in Syria where after the message, all the men who think it was a good sermon come up and kiss you on the cheek. It's just their culture. By the way, scripture referring to that culture says, greet you one another with a holy kiss. People say, well, King James was known to have bodyguards sleeping in his bed. King James' father was assassinated. He survived four assassination attempts. Having bodyguards handy was not some sort of paranoid delusion. And um, it was a common thing, Henry VIII, well-known heterosexual, had a 20-foot bed and four bodyguards sleeping in it at any time, two on either side of him, two men standing in a bedroom and two men at the door. It was not an unusual situation at all. One of the very interesting things about King James was his relationship with his wife. Most royal marriages were political, not romantic. Most queens had a separate palace. They lived separately from the king who would have mistresses living in the royal palace. And that was just normal, but not King James. He and his wife shared their living quarters. That was just virtually unheard of. He wrote love poems to her. She got pregnant 10 times. It's just not what you hear as, as the normal relationship, especially from a homosexual king. At one point describing her writing to her, he said he married her because she was a princess and it was a proper political arrangement. But after having lived with her, it wouldn't matter if she was the cook's daughter uh, because of what she meant to him. And, and that just stands out. When King James was accused after, it, long after his death, many historians rushed his defense. Edward Coke, who was a well-known jurist and an opponent of King James, he and King James battled over the divine right of kings and, and King James eventually fired him. But he would defend King James. He said, at the very least, whatever else you had to say about him, you had to say he stood out as a moral man. Sir Henry Wooten wrote about him, said among his good qualities, none shines more brightly than the chasteness of his life, contrary to the example of almost all of his ancestors. Bishop Goodman, who preached against King James, again over the issue of divine right of kings, would say the king himself was a chaste man. And uh, a lot of folks have said, you know, for example, the introduction to King James Bible, they're praising him for his morality, his Christian leadership, so forth. They say, that's just politics. You had to say things like that. Or they say folks couldn't afford to oppose him. Well, the truth was, it was the clergy who had ran his mother off the throne of Scotland 
preaching against our adulteries. What do you think they'd have done to a homosexual in the same setting? Uh, he would have faced all kinds of opposition, condemnation, and yet none of that ever happened. They disagreed with him on his concept of divine right of kings, I do as well. And they thundered against him from the pulpit for believing he was wrong about that. What do you think they would have done if he'd been the open homosexual that his critics say he was? You think they'd have passed that up? They would have blistered him from the pulpit. English government, like most royal governments, had a certain stipend, a position, living quarters, money uh, for King's mistress. King James never used. Neither. He never had any official mistresses. And they'll say, see, he must have been homosexual. It turns out there's one other possible explanation for that, that he meant all the things that he said when he wrote about morality. And it's been convenient to the enemies of the King James Bible to say he's homosexual. The folks promoting the omnigender revolution today, reading their books about every third page, they say, well, King James is homosexual. King James is homosexual. But what's the evidence? Activists will also say Abraham Lincoln was homosexual. William Shakespeare was homosexual. They, they just attribute to many, many famous people in, in history homosexuality. You can use that argument against King James and call it scholarship, but you can't provide an ounce of evidence.